Good filmmaking is in the details. It's about studying and executing hundreds of tiny little techniques and adjustments to slowly and carefully craft the perfect image. It takes time. And that's what's so ironic about it. Because a lot of the time, you just don't have time. We are chasing a bit of aurora right overhead. It's a, a bit of a mad rush. I don't think we expected this. Sometimes good filmmaking isn't about doing everything. It's about doing as much as you can with the time and resources that you have. So today, I wanna to share with you some of my most used techniques for quickly adding some value and interest to your footage. This is the checklist that I'm going through when I'm setting up a shot on the fly. Of course, filmmaking is subjective and there's no single technique that's going to be an improvement on every single shot. And there are absolutely situations where using these techniques will not give you a better image. These are just techniques to have in the back of your mind that you can quickly pull out and consider using to quickly spice up a shot on the fly. Before we get into the visual techniques, it's important to have some form of a shot list. This isn't a storyboard or a detailed description of every single shot. It's just whatever helps you to stay on track and go into a shoot knowing what you're trying to capture. Personally, before I go out to shoot a video, I take the script for that video and then turn it into a list of all of the footage that I need to convey what I'm talking about visually. So if I'm working on a video about over tourism in Hawaii, I'm obviously gonna need some beautiful establishing shots of the scenery and location, but also detail shots of trail closure signs and shots that convey the over tourism problem, the traffic, the crowds. The list goes on. And I don't frequently refer to this list while I'm shooting, like checking off individual shots. It's more just like a quick update at the end of each shoot day. But I do make this mostly as a way to talk myself through what I need to do when I get to the location. So I don't just show up and like choke. All right, now let's talk about some actual behind the camera techniques, starting out with lighting and a very simple technique first, just shooting the dark side of your subject or backlighting your subject. Usually this is as simple as just moving a couple things around so that the subject of the shot is between the camera and the light source. That way they're lit from behind. And usually this will give you an image with a lot more depth and contrast. This is particularly helpful for shooting in harsh direct light. By shooting the darker side of your subject, you'll end up with softer shadows and an overall smoother, more softly lit subject. It can also give you like a nice ring light around the edge of your subject in the right lighting conditions. Another really simple lighting technique that you can use on the go is if it's dark, to just add a light. like. Just one. If you're shooting at blue hour, maybe turn on your car lights or have your subject carry a flashlight. If you're shooting in a dimly lit room, maybe have your subject looking at a computer screen or a phone screen. When you add even just one light source into an otherwise dimly lit scene, it creates a ton of contrast and jumps right out at you. Another way to quickly add contrast is through color, specifically a complementary color scheme. These are two colors that directly contrast each other, like red and green, or blue and orange. By choosing a color for your subject that directly contrasts its scenery, you'll draw the viewer's eye right to that subject. And this doesn't always have to be like planned out and designed in advance. It could be just having your subject wear a red jacket instead of a black one when you're shooting in a very green forest setting, or changing your lights to a tungsten balance instead of a daylight balance when you're shooting at blue hour. And one final tip to quickly draw some attention to your subject is to pull them off of their background. Back everything up to create as much distance between the subject and the background as possible. With more distance, you can throw that background further out of focus and also create a more noticeable parallax when the camera moves, drawing the attention more to the subject. And this will also just give you an image that has more depth and appears more three-dimensional. Another fantastic technique for creating depth and making a scene feel three-dimensional is to place something in the foreground. Usually I'll look for some kind of plant or detail that I can put right in front of the lens. Having part of the scene very close to the camera makes that scene feel more three-dimensional and makes the viewer feel like they're actually there. It's also great for camera motion. If something's really close to the camera, any small change in the motion is going to be a lot more noticeable. So this is great for shooting handheld and still having a dynamic shot. Speaking of camera motion, it's important to motivate your camera's movement. 
And I'm not talking about like finding a psychological meaning for every camera motion. I just mean like finding something in the scene that the camera can follow. A pan to the left or right could be motivated by a car driving through the frame or a person walking through the frame. And if you're revealing a snowy scene, maybe reveal it by tilting the camera down so that it follows the snow falling rather than tilting it up. And while we're on the topic of camera motion, you don't have to move the camera. And there are actually plenty of scenarios where adding unnecessary camera motion can take away from a scene. So here's a shot of some trees, shot handheld with a nice big camera motion. And then here is the same shot completely locked off. Ironically, I think this shot is actually a lot more interesting because you can see the fog rolling through the trees and the leaves moving in the wind. Even though the camera isn't moving, it's a lot more dynamic. So keep in mind that in the absence of camera motion, the motion within the scene becomes a lot more noticeable. So before you move the camera, just ask yourself why. And if you don't have an answer, at least consider leaving it static. Regardless of the lighting, the color, the camera motion of a shot, it's really beneficial to hold that shot longer than you think you should because you never know when you're gonna get to the edit and want a nice long shot for your story, only to find out that that shot isn't long enough to do that. I've had plenty of embarrassing moments where I had to like loop a shot or digitally slow it down in post because I didn't have as much footage as I needed. So you'll probably only use a few seconds of each shot, but just go ahead and shoot 10 or 15. And the single most important technique is to just take out your camera and start shooting no matter what. Especially when you're traveling or shooting outdoors in natural conditions, there are plenty of scenarios where you arrive to a location or you finish a long hike only to be met with really unfavorable conditions. And it can be easy to say like, eh, this isn't even worth shooting. I'm not even gonna use this footage, so why even bother? and just not even take your camera out. But a lot can change in the editing bay and oftentimes high expectations for what footage should or could have been can completely cloud your judgment of how it actually is. So no matter what, just take your camera out and just get a few shots. Chances are you'll get into a bit of a flow, start finding new compositions and angles and finding ways to work with the conditions that you weren't excited about to start with. And even if that doesn't happen, it's very possible to shoot footage you don't like at the time and then end up actually being very glad that you have it in the edit. You've done all this planning, you've come all this way, just get a few shots. You owe it to yourself and you won't regret it. That's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, learned something new from it. And if you're new here, this is like, I don't know, the 11th or so video in a series of videos all about filmmaking. So we have other videos in this series that dive much deeper into topics that I've kind of brushed over in this one, like color theory and depth and camera movement. So feel free to check out those videos and get a much more detailed breakdown of those techniques. There are also just thousands of other videos on Adorama TV. So if you enjoyed this one, go ahead and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.